the Reader's Digest condensed version to Introduction to Kinematics. First we're going to take a look at a couple of examples that are a good use for kinematics. This robot arm is a really good use. It needs to articulate along this arm here and slide along this track. And once the kinematics are set up, it's very, very easy to use. I'm just going to go ahead and, and free drag this guy out at one second. And I'm going to move the timeline over here to two seconds. Maybe move it over here. Let's go up to four seconds and we'll drag it say up there. And at five seconds, We'll turn this around and maybe drag it over there. So now I've got this arm moving and articulating along the right axis. We get a nice smooth movement. While we're here, grab these keys and hold the control key, copy those out a little bit, and then make that pause in between. So now it's going to go one second pause, two seconds pause. Now just for the sake of showing this little trick here, I'm going to go ahead and go in between these frames and just nudge it a little bit. So robots tend to maybe stop and do a weld or something like that, so we'll just do that. Just give it a little quick nudge. And now when we play that back, you can see it moves, stops, moves, stops, makes this little movement there. And of course I can copy the last key back so it goes back to its original position. Another good use for kinematics is this humanoid. If I play the animation here you can see he's uh, picking up a gear, putting it down, then he grabs another one, puts it down. And once the kinematics are set up, this guy can be brought into multiple documents and different assemblies because the kinematic structure will move along with the belt. Now if I want to go back and modify something, I can just move the timeline and go ahead and get, grab kinematic free dragging and just move his position up here. And now we have a new movement. So again, it takes time to set up the kinematics but in a lot of cases it's very useful. Not all cases need a full kinematic setup. You can get away with faking some, animating some, so you have to think about the kinematics as you're doing it. Now we're going to move over and look at this example of the structure that we'll be working on here. Since we have a 10 minute time limit for YouTube, I'm going to just work on half this model for now. Before we start, I'm going to bring up a couple toolbars that we'll be using quite frequently. The Pivot Alignment Toolbar and the Kinematic Toolbar. If we look at this finished example, it has a parent-child relationship going on here. And I'm going to turn on this DOF here to show the degrees of freedom. So we can see all the kinematic links and structures that are currently set up in this file. This is really the fundamentals of kinematics, is to set up this parent-child relationship, set up the pivots and where they rotate, and assign the kinematic links. Let's jump over to this blank one, and we'll be doing that in this exercise. Looking at this, we can see there are currently no parent-child relationship set up, and there's no kinematic links set up. So we're going to do that by first using this button, Link Child to Parent, and we click on the child, then we click on its parent. Then we click on this object as a child and click on this object as a parent. Then we're going to click on that as a child and that object as a parent. Lastly, we're going to set this as a child to this as a parent. So now we can see this parent-child relationship set up. The next thing we need to do is set up the pivots. So currently, if I select these, this object and go to multi-gizmos mode, you can see the pivots are all set up in obscure direction and uh, not necessarily in good locations. So we're going to use this tool over here, set pivot on line or axis, to drop the pivot on a logical axis. This object is going to move along the Y axis and we want to have all our parent-child relationships set up so that they go in the same orientation. So, for example, if this is Z up, we want everything along the chain to be Z up. 
So let me just set some of these other pivots here real quick. I'll set this object on the same axis because that kind of makes sense there. This object we'll put right here. And this object we'll set up right here. And lastly, don't forget the parent. It needs to be set up as well. So we're going to drop that right on its axis there. So now we have the parent-child relationship and we have the pivot set up. The next thing to do is assign the kinematic link. So we're going to go over here and assign kinematic link and the link type in this case will be a linear and it's along the y-axis. So you can see this is moving along the y-axis. This object is going to be a pivot so we'll set up a kinematic link of a pivot and it's moving along the z-axis which is what we want. This object will also be a pivot on the z-axis. This object is going to be a pivot as well. Now we don't need to set up this object because it's going to be stationary. So that set up, let's do a quick test. We can drag this out, drags along that axis. This object you know, rotates here and the kinematic chain is working from the child all the way down to the root. Let me just restore the neutral position to these guys. So the kinematics are set up correctly and now I can set up some limits. So currently this object is not in the middle here so we need to measure actually from here to here and from here to here so we could decide how far this object can travel when we set the limits or I can just go to the top view here and I'm going to just drag this down in about the middle of that object and reset the pivot. So now we can see that object is moving along the correct axis and it's about the middle. Now if I go down here we're going to enable limited joints and we have 150 units in either direction. So that's the full length of this object here. We only need to move it half. So I'm going to turn this to minus 75 plus 75. Now I can see it drags and stops in either direction. Next we're going to set up the limit for this object and I'll go to the top view so you can see that a little bit better and if we enable limited joints on this we see values minus 182 plus 180 full 360 degrees here we just want this to go maybe 60 degrees in either direction And now you can see the blue circle here is, is changed to about 120 degrees. And this x-axis is right in the center. When we use our free dragging again, you can see that it's only going to go up to this limit and this limit before it stops. It won't go anymore. So again, that's some fundamentals and basic strategies for setting up kinematics. In the next episode, we'll continue with this model to show how we can work with the pivots and align the pivots on different axes and it's a little bit more advanced topics as well as how to handle objects when they have multiple parents. Currently you cannot set up an object with a multiple parent. For example, if this object is parented to here, we couldn't make it parented here and have a kinematic chain like that. It's multiple parents or multi-loop objects are not allowed. We'll show you how to get through a few different variations of that. So there's your quick introduction to kinematics.